Well, the, the reason, one of the reasons we created this exhibit and this project and program was uh, to, to uh, let the public know more about this program, which was fascinating for me to learn about. It was a bi-national program. It was government-sponsored program. Um, and to talk about that in the time when, when we were creating it, in the time when there was this tension between Mexico and the United States in terms of social issues and labor issues. Uh, just to bring that forward and say, you know, this was a program that started, that was agreed upon, that was worked upon with government agencies. Um, I thought that was really interesting and fascinating and important to tell. Um, but also the impact that this program had in, uh, in both agriculture policy um, and in social cultural lands, changing social cultural landscape was also very important. The legacy that this program had for communities both in Mexico and here in the United States, the creation of thriving Mexican-American communities um, can almost certainly be traced back to the program. So in that respect, um, both it was government and both of the legacy of the program I think are very important things to, to document and to show um, the, the public. You know, it, I, I think it's really important to, to uh, acknowledge the fact that it's here in the, in the Holocaust Museum of Houston versus any other place. Um, you know, the, the Perseros at the time were, it, it was not a perfect program by any means. Um, that's kind of why we call it um, bittersweet. It, it was both a program for opportunity, but it was full of conflict. And I think um, it's quite appropriate to have it here in this museum because of the uh, such horrible conditions that a lot of them faced when they were here. Um, again, it was discrimination, it was civil rights, it was wages, it was living conditions, it was uh, treatment of workers, it was the physical work that they were doing um, that other people may or may not want to, want to do, like the domestic workers. And so I think it's important to have it here and have this discussion about what it means to be um, uh, a worker in the United States and what it means to be uh, a Mexican national or Mexican American in, in this, in this uh, day and age. And so I, you know, I, I, I appreciate that they, they, that they, they brought it here and, and I look forward to seeing how they, they work with the different communities to see how they, they can um, expand those discussions. <laughs> um, well, it's um, historically speaking, the the guest worker program was started wartime measure, so they needed workers, right? They they needed uh, workers to come here to pick the crops and work in the railroads. Um, so, from that standpoint. Um, I think it was, it's important to understand from that standpoint that it, we, those workers were essential. Um, and that gets lost sometimes. Because after the war, the issue of uh, what happens to the domestic workers was really, really the driving um, issue at the time, that the, the domestic workers were not getting these jobs. and. The, the growers, the associations were pushing for um, these temporary workers because they could get away with lower wages, because they could get away with um, the fact that they didn't have to, um, uh, uh, that they didn't, were, were not able to unionize, that they were not able to um, have exactly the same kinds of rights as a domestic worker would have. Um, Yet, they were also not turning around getting um, labor that was not documented, the illegal uh, workers. And so both of these were happening simultaneously. So um, I think it's fundamentally important to understand why that was going on and how that was working and what, what are those lessons that we can learn today. Um, so. 
I think some of the issues that the Bracero program had and the issues that migrant workers today have are, are the same in terms of um, wages and discrimination and um, rights. Uh, because I think there's a fundamental um, problem with discrimination and racism, which was quite evident in the 40s and 50s. Um, and I think it's still prevalent and runs through um, the, the, the way workers are recruited and, and, and handled today. So I, historically speaking, it's, you, you can point to that idea that the Mexican worker was always looked at as um, something less than, um, than uh, a full citizen and full human in some respects. And so um, I think that there might still be some of that today. And I think that's where a lot of the, the issues are, are stemming from. Um, this exhibit started um, actually many years ago. Um, in 90, 1998, the museum acquired 1,700 images from Leonard Nadell. He was a California photographer who documented the Bracero, uh, um, the Esperantes, the, the the potential Braceros and documented their, their process from Mexico and the United States. So in 98, we acquired these images and um, uh, spent the next few years trying to figure out what to do, how to bring them to life. And uh, we came together, I think it was in 2005, to really talk about um, uh, the issue of guest labor and migration. Um, we gathered um, many scholars and experts on the Bracero program. And we decided, to, and, and, and we actually uh, um, got involved with the University of Texas at El Paso, which had been documenting some former Braceros. And so together, we came up with the Bracero History Project, which is a documentation project, um, oral history project, documenting the, the experiences of the former Braceros um, before, they, um, before they left before they died. Um, part of the reason was because it was a wartime uh, measure, wartime program, and so those wartime veterans and wartime uh, workers were, were passing, were dying, and so we wanted to get their experiences before that happened. And so we wanted to bring the images to life with these oral histories, and we thought we'd collect 75 uh, interviews, which turns out we could collect at over 700 together. So it was a, a very, important project in that respect. And then, um, so we knew uh, we do exhibits. That's what we do at the Smithsonian. And, and we created an exhibit that would go travel around to these various communities. And um, in doing the research for the Bracero program, I found that a lot of the communities didn't have any records or archives of these communities. Um, and so we wanted to use this um, exhibit as a way for different communities to document the, the work of the Braceros, the work of the Mexican-American communities, the history of those communities, and put them in their own local institution. So that's the, the reason that we started the project. I always go back to, just because it was kind of powerful for me, and I wrote about it in a blog, but it, it was the first collecting event. We, we would go around the country uh, partnering with local institutions to, to bring in the former Braceros and then uh, record their stories, set up times and record their stories. And so the, the project was, was um, going to these communities with these local institutions partners. The first partnership we did was in San Jose. And I remember the, the program was supposed to start, uh, we were supposed to start um, uh, recording oral histories at like nine o'clock in the morning. Um, so we showed up at 8 o'clock and there were already lines of former Braceros, the men were just already there uh, waiting for us to set up. And so that, you know, that was something I wasn't quite expecting, but in retrospect I think it, it, I should have, but, but it was always, uh, that's always ingrained in my head, like the, the, the willingness for them to want to tell their, and share their story and, and, and you know, sort of 
the, the need to share their experience with us. Um, but so as we're setting up, uh, a young gentleman comes up, young guy, younger than I was at the time, um, with a hat, a very dirty, soiled hat, and he said it was his from his grandfather, who was a former bracero, and that was the the hat that he used when he was um, migrating back and forth uh, in Mexico with the bracero con contracts, and that it's the only one of the only things they had from their grandfather, but they wanted us to have it to share that history and that story um, and for us to, to use it to tell the story. And so that was always very um, meaningful for me and sort of what sort of drove the rest of the project for me.